Hello, everybody. Beginning of October, Rose Park Fishery, Altman, Cornwall. Technique, nine foot five weight, two Fuji Torzite strippers, short head five weight floater, and uh, an olive snake. See how we get on. Ooh, nice. Let it sink. Give it a strip to get that leader under. And just start stripping. Just start stripping. I'm gonna get that tip under the water to minimize the wake. On, there he is. There he is. Really bend into that fish. You need a rod to bend. I mean, this feels like a two weight in the end. We can really bully those fish in if you want. There we go. Straight out again, no messing around. Tip under the water and get it stripped. It's as simple as that really. You can often see the fish chasing it. I can see that fly jinking. Oh, there's a fish. There he is, he's after it, he's after it. Get low to the go. Pick up, pick, there he is. Oh, he had it. <laughs> he had that as well. He had that. If a fish follows you in, get down to the horizon because I won't talk about it. I'll tell you about it later. But they can see you basically. There you go. Straight in like that. It's a nice, this is a better fish. Oh, he's going, he's going, he's going. That's nice. This technique, nine foot five, well, the whole technique range. It's based on having a really sort of through action, which means I can play these fish hard with light tippets. Oh yeah, it's a nice fish. Quite a dark fish. Oh no, he's still over there. Oh no, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. There he is, there he is, there he is. Oh, get in, look at that. Really put a bend in on it. People don't use ply rods to bend. They're scared of snapping them, which I understand. Come on, there he is. This setting, don't know if you can see it, the alignment guides, you can turn it to the right or to the left, depending on which side you cast from, right or left. I've got it on the right, I'm right handed, and what it means is the line stays off the blank and so there's less friction it means I can cast easier to help that I've got these Fuji Torzite single leg uh, standoff guides these are the most expensive guides you can put on a fly rod and I've got two of them and look how far the line stays off the blank this angle here means that the angle that the fly line turns around when you're hauling is less again reducing friction the action of the rod is based off a, a fiberglass rod that I used to make, I still do make called California. There he is. There he is. I could feel everything then. I felt him nip. And then I, I was able to set the hook. Another nice fish. One weight glass. Just so much fun. Okay, let's see how quickly it takes. I'll play him hard and get him in and see how quickly it takes in one shot. Just to prove to you that you don't need stick rods. Here he is, he's coming in. 
Here he is, he's in. Well, he wants to go, he's not quite in. That was a bit previous, but look, he's not far off. Because I'm bending double, I'm bending full there. I'm using the whole of the rub, not just the tip of a stiff seven weight. So what I've done is I've taken those qualities, which to me are just the best qualities of a fly rod, and put them in ultra slim carbon fiber, which means that the rod's lighter, it responds quicker, and it's just basically the F1 version of a, of a soft rod. And when you hook a fish, it means that you've got a lot of shock absorption to play it, which is what you need so you don't lose fish. Straight casts. Kingfisher there, nice, beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> Here's one coming now. Lower your there he's he's looking at it. He wants it. He's gonna turn, he's gonna come back. He's gonna come back. Keep yourself low. Nymph him out. There you go. Okay. So now we're into playing the fish. It's not a big fish, but you'd lose him on a seven weight or a stiff rod. People say soft rods. It means that you play the fish for longer. Well, that wasn't the case there, was it? That's a, I don't know, it's two and a half pounder, but nice fish. Barbless hooks, so the hook's already out. I don't even handle him. <clears throat> Knotless mesh, safe as it goes. So there's my point. If you fish correctly with a nice soft rod, barbless hooks, knotless mesh, I face quite a bit of criticism. Soft rods, they harm fish. Well, it hasn't then, has it? Okay, people would use a seven or an eight weight typically to catch fish like that all day long, especially in competitions. And they lose a lot of fish, why? Because the tip of the rod doesn't follow the fish. If you have a look, the tip of my rod then followed the fish and absorbed the head shakes and the lunges. If the tip of the rod stays stiff and the fish is bouncing around like that, at some, part, at some point, it's gonna part ways. So people fix that problem by going up in tippet. They say, you've got to put nine pound tippet on because there's some big fish. No, it's the absolute wrong way around. You've got to use a softer rod. Thick tippet, poor presentation of flies. You don't hook as many as well. You just simply don't catch as many. And then because you've got a stiff rod and thick tippet, there's this sort of tension everywhere. It's like a, it's like a car crash. The head's shaking everywhere and it just parts ways. So yeah, that's my argument for softer rods. Technique, nine foot, five weight. Now we're back on with a float sink tip. There he is, oh, he had a bite. Yeah, he is, he's coming back. He'll come back. There he is. <laughs> Cheers, mate. They're a bit deeper now, aren't they? Really bend into them. Change, Microlite GT, 10 foot, 6 inch, 3 weight, 5 piece. Cork, very slim cork handle, matte black blank. Alignment guide settings, you can have it on left, right, or in the middle. Fuji tour sights all the way through. And now I'm fishing a static pair of buzzers. I think the fish have gone down deeper. Just fishing it New Zealand style. It's just sort of the ring, there he is. There he is. Yeah, he's on that top dropper. That's nice. Very, very delicate take. You see where I can reach over these reeds here and these things with this long rub. There's a lot, again, just like the technique, a lot of action in it. So I can fish him on, keep him in control on that short line. He's not going anywhere. Because look at the rod tip. The rod tip's following his head shakes. If it was a stiff rod, the head would shake tip would stay where it is and they'd part company. I would have lost that fish on a stiff rod. I'm hooking them because I'm fishing light tippets and I'm landing them because I'm fishing a soft rod. Simple as that. We're effectively trying to beat drag in everything that we're doing when we're going fishing, fly fishing specifically. 
We're trying to beat drag through air and drag through water. We're trying to prevent the fly dragging unnaturally. And when the fish hooks and the flies, fly line's in the water, we're preventing that drag against that fly line in the water, pulling the hook out, as well as the strength of the fish. So if you can have everything thinner and reduce the friction at every touch point, you're beating drag and that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're fighting drag and gravity. One, two, three. Their behavior, oh, yeah, there you go, again. Nice. Bouncing around. And you see the way there's no, there's no drama in the fight because there's more, sh there's shock absorption there. Okay. It turns it from a, a, a cage fight to a chess game. Just guide him in. Nice. Enjoying yourself? I am. Conditions have changed again. It's a bit more windy, a bit more cloud cover. So I'm going to go up to a seven weight technique, 10 foot seven weight. But here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to show you the exact unboxing sequence. Rod, reel, line, tippet, and fly. Let's go. Okay, starting off, brand new <laughs> Sunray technique. Absolute unboxing. Here we go, it's happening right now. Just put this on the floor for now. There we go. 10 foot, seven weight. Seven weights don't have to be stiff rods. I'm gonna show you exactly how they should play fish right now. Okay, stiff to get into. Brand new, brand new. Dun, dun, dun. You see that? It's called air mesh. It's a breathable cushioning rod sock. So when you put your wet rod back into your rod tube, it doesn't get moldy. Beautiful. Three Fuji K-Series Torzite strippers. Three of them. Three of them. Extremely expensive guides, the most expensive guides you can put on a fly rod, and we've got three of them. Why? To keep the line off the rod and away from the rod as much as possible. Super slim carbon, look how slim it is. An absolute beautiful rod. Onto that, I'm gonna put this. It's the get down float into seven, seven weight. It's got a floating section, an overhang marker, and a four foot, slowly 1.5 inches per second sinking tip on it. Let's put this on. Well, I've actually put it on a reel already. Now I'm gonna show you something else. Straight and soft tapered leaders. The clue's in the name. Right. You know tapered leaders, get them out of the bag normally. They're coily like springs, aren't they? This is 12 foot tapering down to eight pounds, okay? It's two-tone in color. The butt section has got a gray pigment in it, and that gray pigment makes the butt section very, very soft. And you'll see when I'm getting it out of the packet now that they are exactly that. They come out straight and they're very soft. And why is that important? Well, in, if you've got a coily leader, it scares the fish, basically. Right, okay. This is straight out of the packet, you saw it. Okay, a tiny bit of coiling there. Look at that, look at that. Usually they come out like springs and you can't get the coils out. Quick tip, guitar string. There you go, look at that. Perfectly straight, perfectly straight. And you've got a gray pigment here and it tapers down into this clear butt section. Okay. Snakes. Ta da Okay. Showing you everything brand new out of the packet. Showing my whole system. Which snake am I going to go for? I'm going to go for this olive one. Normal snakes, they pulse and collapse. Uh, they, they catch fish, but I catch many more fish with these wire body varieties. Let's see how we get on. I'll put the fly in the water, I'll strip the line onto the ground, I'll make a couple of false casts and I'll put this fly out. Okay, 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to strip that back. I'm going to let it settle for a minute and then I'm going to wait for that tip. I can just see that tip slowly starting to sink now. I'm going to make a couple of strips back to get the fly under the water and wet and we'll see how we get on. There's one, there's one. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how the rod, seven weight, plays a fish. Look. Great, so now I can show you how this rod plays a fish. I'm playing it hard, and he's going wild, isn't he? He's not a big fish, but look, look at the whole bend of the rod. You want the rod to bend fully. Even a seven weight, it doesn't have to be a stiff poker. Barbless flies in the net. Okay. Let's get this fish. I don't even get him out of the water, right? <clears throat> you see, I just turned the rod ring sideways there to the setting, to the right hand setting. And look, it puts the guides on that side of the blank, which means, look, the line's laying off the blank. Little snake roll to change direction. <laughs> Catch more fish when it's windy. Like that. So yeah, this fish is going now. Oh, he's fighting nice. Look, he's taking line. But I'm really bending into him. The rings, to me, cost as much as the entire rod of some other brands. But they've got to be on it. They have to be on it to complete the system. The ultra-thin blank. The slim handle. The offset alignment guides. And then these Fuji Torzites. Three of them. They have to be there because it's about the whole system. It's an anti-drag, anti-friction, low friction system, anti-tangle. And it means you catch more fish. Then it means you can play them properly, fully bend into them. You'd lose this fish normally. Look at that, straight into the net. Barbless hooks, I bet that hook's come out of him. This is the snake fly collection, okay? These are the main laws that I use. Something's chasing that. Yeah, there you go. See, change is as good as the rest. Just change it up, change it up and out. Just bring him in, just bring him in. Great fishery, this, love it. Two lakes. Bottom lake's closed at the moment. It's Rose Park Fishery here in Altonen, Cornwall. I'm changing snake again now, right? To this sort of green, buggy-eyed tiger sort of damsel. And look again how the body keeps its shape because of this wire body, this wire undercarriage. And that makes it jink in the water like, in the water like this. It makes it turn like this. And then when it flutters, it flutters down. It also prevents the fly from tangling on itself. I just, uh, I think this vlog's really about the joy of tackle. Yeah, I think it is. It's taken years of actual development, but it's taken years of experience. You know, I'm 51 now. I started fly fishing when I was six. I trained as an instructor. It took me seven years. So yeah, I'm feeling quite reflective here. <laughs> you know, stood here with you. Yeah, I think I must be getting old or something. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what it is. It's this new range of rods, these techniques. They look amazing as well. <laughs> I'm just so happy with them. I'm just so happy with them. <sighs> well, this vlog for me has been about technique, change, tackle, uh, stuff like that. Making tackle, my journey of making tackle, using tackle, using different methods, changing methods, uh, moving position, changing angles, changing flies, changing lines, changing rods, and changing times. Uh, let me give one more strip of this now. I've just allowed that to sink a little bit. 
feels fishy because it's deep. It is fishy because it was deep. Changing depth. He's powerful, though, eh? Well done. It's a handsome fish, isn't it? He's a dark fish. He's a really dark fish, but look at the tail on that. Great fish here at Rose Park. Get him straight back in. Change flies, change rods, change lines, change position, change depth, change, change angle, change speed. And develop technique. Develop skills, long casting, short casting, men's, snap pickups, fish barbless. I feel like Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Orange, hothead. It seems to have brought the pool back on. There, like that, three. Yeah, interesting, change of fly. I've, I mean, I've changed flies many times, but keep changing until you find one that just brings them on again. I mean, it'll probably have a very short lifespan. Oh, one fish was following that. This flies really lit him up. He, he was like, wanted it as well. As I was pulling it out, he was, he raced towards it. The usual, he usually wants to, oh, there you go. That's a different fish. Hothead aggressor. <laughs> Fantastic. Love this fly. You're not leaving a footprint you know, imprinting their lives too much. Uh, great, 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 great. I'll see you on the next one. There.